Today I'm going to head over to Mate's place and try to take these customised foot pockets off the fin, the ones that have cracked because of a design fault which the subsequently corrected the manufacturer has, but that's no good to me, so I'm going to take these off. I've got a uh, new Oma Stingrays that I got sent in from Spain, they seem to fit me okay, so I'm going to try and get those foot pockets off the mulching of blades and then put the blades in these new foot pockets. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, that's glued. Yeah, see if it's glued that way. Is it peeling off? Yep. Yeah. Maybe it wouldn't be too bad. I've just got this because this is like not sharp. Yeah. So I'm not gonna um, like do anything to the carbon fiber. Yep. See the edge of the fin there? Yep. Like right there, so I think it's just gonna be a slow process. Yep. That'd be a noise. It's like air trapped in between bits of it. Yeah. Yeah, because you can cut along the edge of the along the edge of that carbon there, so it's not going to stick very well to the edge of it. I, mean, I think it'll come off, even if it's glued fully all the way on top. We should be able to peel it off. Yeah. Just wondering whether the same end up being the same shape. Whether they actually fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New foot pockets. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, it's worth a try. Yeah. I've got to be careful, this is fucking sharp now. I can cut myself. <laughs> they must have drilled down into the. Maybe they've drilled through it. No, I think it's just stuck really well. Oh, there might be another heel. A different bit in there. Yeah, something another for the heel. pad in there. Pry that whole thing out. Oh, that popped. <laughs> yeah, that definitely came off there. So it's probably just. Okay, because they haven't stuck together very well then, obviously. That, that heel. Like no, that, that, actual... that piece hasn't stuck. The rubber at the front, I think, is stuck better. I just don't want to push too much pressure on it. Yeah. I mean, they're pretty. It takes a lot to break that though, like carbon fiber. Yeah. Like, geez, you'd have to. I don't know whether I'd even be able to break it. Okay, so it's stuck good there. Yeah. I have to just cut that off. Hey. So it's just that front bit sucked down much better. That's really thick there. That's coming off, isn't it? Some of it will have to anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Because the, ra the rail's going to come down there. Yeah. Hey! So different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that size? Where are we going to about there? Oh, it might work. Similar sort of size there. I mean? Yeah. At that point. Is it the first one or the second one? <laughs> yeah, it's the third one. Because it's a lot of shit yeah. on it. It's catching just on the side. Work it down. Oh, I'll try it. 
trying to pull this right open. Let's yeah. see if it looks straight. That's the center. No, it's going to go that way a little bit, I think. The blade. Yeah, it's a little bit off. Right, right through the center of that. Center yeah. mark on the, it's through the center of the fin there. Yeah. Yeah, centered. You know that's the right place. Yep. Back there. And So it stayed down. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'll just undo it and tighten it again. ready to be glued just sanding off the smooth edges inside the tendon Right. <laughs> At the gap here, if I go further, it actually opens up. Like that gets further away from there. Yep. Do we like as it goes in that that sort of there's more distance? So I think that's about right. That's right because that'll just glue down there. So we can clean that. Like firm butter. <laughs> That's beveled on the 45.
Just to take the glossy film off. No cold swab. A little bit of an obstruction at the edge. So we'll cut these Should slot in. Perfect. The pressure in 20 seconds should bond. We need to lift it. See, that's pretty high. Seconds. See it coming out of the hole there, but down the bottom. Even hardly squeezing. That comes out like I'm not hardly even. Just leaks out, really. Yeah, I'm not even like I'm not even really squeezing that. <laughs> oh, that's just running out. I'm not even, I'm not squeezing at all. Yeah. So I just need to go relatively quick. Yeah. So I don't end up with it fucking everywhere. Just push it on. Oh, fuck, a lot of glue went in there. <laughs> That's okay. I can see it going past the holes. Yep. So I mean that's not going to be a bad thing. I mean the more that it's there. Uh, yeah. Just trying to get in the centre of the fucking... So now I'm all set, uh, I'm just going to run through the fins I have. I've got now three pairs that I use. Uh, I've got the original Diver composite blades, these are about 15 years old, I've used them extensively more than most people would use fins ever. I was, when I was pool training, um, a lot, I'd use it four or five times a week, and sometimes on the weekends and then on my, when I take annual leave I'd be using it on dive trips uh, until I had some other carbon blades. Um, so I've got extensive work out this fin. Uh, as you can see, I've glued this with the other shoe glue, which kind of fades and I do have to replace this from probably every six months. I do leave these fins in the car, so they do heat up a little bit um, because I'm just using these in the pool and not this one, but the other one's cracked at the end. So they're really quite heavy. They're not um, that great for diving in the ocean anymore compared to some of the newer stuff out there. So that's my training fin. 
We've got the mulchinols, which we've fixed up. I haven't tested these yet. I think, obviously, these were custom foot pockets originally, and I'm not 100% sure they're going to uh, transition to a, another pocket that well. I'm, I'm obviously going to lose some efficiency from going from a custom foot pocket to a regular foot pocket, but I might lose a little bit more um, just because I don't know if it fitted perfectly when we put it in. Uh, but uh, I might use these in sort of shallow water, a lot of reef diving, because they've, they've scratched up a fair bit now, and I'm kind of... <laughs> You kind of get through it to the next stage when you don't care so much and they're a little bit shorter so quite maneuverable so i'll probably do a lot of reef sort of stuff with these uh, so they might work out all right for that but at least i saved them um carbon blades are quite expensive so it's good to keep them going and i'll, I'll get more use out of these uh, and i went and invested in some penetrator fins penetrator fins are made here in the well on the gold coast uh, in queensland australia um, I haven't tested these out again, um, as you can see I went with white, white rails, white, um, the logo white, uh, the reason I did that, there's a couple of reasons, one is for visibility, I like to go down a little bit deeper than probably my friends do sometimes, and having something white actually enables them to see me a little bit better, particularly if the visibility's dropped a little bit, so they can watch me go down and see, and when you start to on a dive when you start to level out you can kind of move away from from where you've actually started the dive and you can drift and it enables them to see that so they can move move at the surface to stay above me which is a bit more safety for me uh, and yeah that's that's one of the things I really like about it so they can follow me closely uh, the other thing is um, I did it because I think um, it may actually help bring in the mackerel uh, the Spanish mackerel is a fish that we hunt a lot here so I'm I'm just wondering if this flapping around a bit might attract some mackerel. So that's, that's kind of what I'm <laughs> wishing for. Uh, there's a slight risk that it might um, bring in some sharks, but probably not going to be too much of a problem uh, around here. There might be a problem in the tropics, so I'm going to be careful. I'm going to go to the tropics soon. Uh, we'll see how it goes, see how those aggressive sharks react. If they, if they react um, quite badly to these, I'll use the mulchinols, which are all black. Um, because they're quite light, the carbon fins are quite light, so you can transport them. Uh, so that's that's another good plus with that yeah so it's great to have a, a second set because i realized when i my mulchinals were knocked out i had to use my dive arc composites in the water and i did a drop down to about 30 meters 100 feet and it was quite hard to get back from because it was cracked and everything and yeah you want a couple of if you're really into it you want a couple of good pairs of fins so if something goes wrong you can quickly sort of swap them out and then keep diving and doing what you love to do but yeah that's where I'm at with my fins at the moment, so I'm going to go test out these penetrator fins. Probably do a video on that in the next few weeks and see how they go. Uh, but yeah, getting ready for some big trips coming up. Just to recap the materials you'll need to glue a carbon blade into a new foot pocket. You obviously need the glue. Uh, we use Loctite 406. It's a very good compound that'll last the life of the blade in the foot pocket. You can go for a cheaper option like shoe glue, which I have used in the past, but it'll need to be replaced several times throughout the life of the blade being in the foot pocket well it's a lot cheaper so it depends on your budget um that, that said if you spend a lot of money on a carbon blade maybe and maybe you're comfortable that they fit together well you could uh yeah spend the money it's probably worth it uh the other thing you need is a scotch bright pad that is where you will smooth off the surface uh where you are going to glue the foot pocket onto the carbon blade so we'll be smoothing off that surface uh, another thing you need is sandpaper the reason you need sandpaper is inside of the the tendon guide on the on the actual the tendon rail on the actual foot pocket it comes quite smooth so we just run a bit of sandpaper in there to actually uh, create a rough surface that will glue onto uh, if you don't have the scotch bright incidentally you can use just very gently use the sandpaper to roughen up the surface of the actual carbon um, blade where you're going to glue it but just do it very gently because you don't want to damage and weaken the carbon. Um, the other thing you'll need is a alcohol swab. Uh, you just get like a little cheap one from the supermarket. Uh, the reason for that is there's often some residu residue from the manufacturing process on the carbon blade so we just kind of use an alcohol swab to clean that off and any gunk on there on the blade. Um, we just want to remove that with an alcohol swab before you glue. Uh, there's a few other things I guess um, you'll need a, a good standing knife, craft knife, what do you want to call it. Uh, to cut um, 
yeah, you might need to cut off the very end of the tendons to make them fit and remove any existing rails to just make them all work and slide in properly. Um, and other than that, you also need a hairdryer, which when you run the glue and if you, the glue runs everywhere, you can use a hairdryer to push it around um, underneath the areas you're gonna glue and then when you hold it down, that just helps it secure a little bit better. Um, but that's pretty much it.